Model 1945 single Venturi carburetor is used on our current 198 and 225 cubic inch six cylinder passenger car and light truck engines. The same basic carburetor is used in all applications. The main variations being in the calibration of each model, a throttle lever dash pot on manual transmission models, and a power valve modulator mechanism which is added to California models. Since this is a new carburetor, Let's begin by identifying the external parts. We'll use the California manual transmission model because it includes all the parts covered in our story. Beginning on the throttle lever side, we have the choke vacuum control diaphragm and link, choke shaft lever, fast idle speed adjusting screw, power valve modulator rod and the rod operating lever. On the same side, we also see the fast idle cam and link curb idle speed adjusting screw, and the choke unloader tang. Continuing around the carburetor, we next see the limiter cap of the idle mixture adjusting needle, and the fittings for the hoses to the canister purge port, to the OSAC, distributor spark advance control valve, and to the crankcase vent valve. On the front side, we have the fuel inlet fitting, the EGR vacuum amplifier hose fitting, the throttle lever dash pot, and the accelerating pump rocker arm. The remaining side has the heated inlet air sensor hose fitting, the accelerating pump operating rod and link, and the positive throttle return spring. Now, let's get inside the carburetor so we can identify the internal parts and pass on a few tips as we go along. First, slide off the retainer clip and remove the fast idle cam and link. Then, remove the choke control diaphragm, and unhook the modulator rod operating lever spring to relieve pressure on the rod. Next, on the fuel inlet side, we remove the dash pot, and unhook the positive throttle return spring to relieve throttle closing pressure. With the float bowl cover screws removed, tap the underside of the accelerating pump retainer boss to separate the cover from the bowl. Then lift the cover and gasket upward until the accelerating pump rod link can be unhooked and remove the cover. On the underside of the cover, we see the accelerating pump plunger and operating rod, the main well tube, the power valve operating piston stem, and the piston modulating rod. The spring-loaded modulator rod and its staked-in retainer plate remain with the cover. Be sure to handle the cover assembly carefully, because the retainer can be popped out of place if the rod is displaced too far. The vacuum piston retainer ring is also staked in, but it can be removed to release the piston if cleaning is necessary. Scrape away the staking with a sharp tool. And remove the piston by snapping it against the retainer. Or by using the special pulling tool. The bowl cover assembly of Federal model carburetors has the same basic parts as California models, but there is no pickup rim on the vacuum piston foot, and there is no vacuum piston modulator. The accelerating pump plunger seal cup floats on the end of the plunger stem, and can be removed without disconnecting the plunger. If the operating rod seal must be replaced, we remove the rod retainer and work the rod inward so the plunger can be unhooked. The 
rod can then be worked out of the seal. When the new seal is installed, apply a dab of silicone lubricant in the seal hole and reverse the rod removal process so the plunger can be hooked back on. Make sure that the small diameter end of the spring is against the plunger plate. Hold the spring compressed until the plunger is hooked on and the rod worked back in place. With the large diameter end of the spring properly seated, operate the assembly to make sure it moves freely. Then replace the rod retainer. Now inside the bowl we have the dual float assembly which lifts out after the fulcrum pin retainer spring is removed. And at this point Let's invert the bowl to drop out the accelerating pump ball check valve and its weight. At the bottom, we can see the accelerating pump cylinder, the main jet, and the power valve. The main jet and power valve can be turned with a screwdriver blade, which fits the jet and valve slots snugly. The special remover tool for the main jet fits the jet slots and counterbore exactly and makes removal and installation easier. To remove and replace the idle mixture screw and limiter cap correctly, turn the limiter clockwise against its stop and remove the cap. Then, with this as the starting position, note the number of turns required to seat the screw. When installing, turn the screw in by hand until it seats. Back it out the noted number of turns and reinstall the limiter cap against the stop. If the three attaching screws are removed to separate the throttle body from the bowl for cleaning, be sure you torque them to 30 inch pounds when reassembling so they'll stay put. The float setting is checked with the bowl inverted to allow float weight to compress the soft needle valve tip. Hold the retainer spring up against the fulcrum pin and place a straight edge across the gasket surface of the bowl. Ideally, the float tip should just touch the straight edge. However, they can be above or below the gasket surface line by the specified amount. To adjust, bend the float lever tang as needed. Before installing the bowl cover, make sure the gasket is positioned on the locating pins in the bottom of the cover. Install the ball check valve and its weight. Then position the cover assembly to properly align the cover parts with the bowl openings, giving special attention to the main well tube and pump seal cup. As the cover is lowered, hook the accelerating pump link into the correct rocker arm slot and make sure the pump operates freely before the cover is secured. Since this is a manual transmission carburetor, we use the middle slot on the accelerating pump rocker arm. Automatic transmission models use the long slot. The short inner slot is not used. Hook up the positive throttle return spring and reinstall the dash pot. Hook up the modulating rod lever spring, placing the long tail end behind the curb idle adjusting screw. Attach the choke control vacuum diaphragm and link. Install the fast idle cam and link. And you're ready for the external adjustment checks. We begin our checks and adjustments with the accelerating pump setting. Here we measure the length of the link by firmly seating one end of a T-scale against the inside of the link's lower end and moving the slider in contact with the outside of the hooked end. On manual transmission models, the link should measure 2 and 7 30 seconds of an inch. On automatic transmission models, 2 and 11 30 seconds. 
If not, change the length of the link by bending the U-shaped section. The fast idle cam position adjustment is next. Position the fast idle speed adjusting screw on the second highest step of the cam. And insert the specified gauge between the top edge of the choke valve and the air horn wall. With light closing force on the choke valve lever, a slight drag should be felt as the gauge is withdrawn. If adjustment is needed, bend the idle cam link at the upper angle. The choke unloader setting is easy to check. Hold the throttle lever in wide open position. And here again, with light closing force on the choke valve lever, check the choke opening with the specified gauge. To adjust the setting, bend the unloader tang on the throttle lever as needed. Next, we set the stage for checking the choke vacuum kick adjustment by connecting a vacuum source to the choke control diaphragm. Either hand pump or mouth vacuum is best for this job because they also make it easy to detect small leaks which might otherwise be missed. To check the kick setting, first open the throttle and close the choke valve to position the fast idle cam so it will not interfere with the test. Then close the throttle to hold the cam in position and allow the choke valve to drop open. Now. Apply at least 15 inches of vacuum to retract the diaphragm. And insert the specified gauge between the top of the choke valve and the air horn wall. Apply sufficient closing pressure on the choke valve to compress the modulating spring in the diaphragm stem and gauge the choke opening. The spring is fully compressed when the inner and outer parts of the stem make contact. If the setting is not correct, Bend the choke control link at the U section to change its length as needed. Be sure to bend the link carefully because twisting or bending forces on the stem can damage the diaphragm. Curb idle speed adjustment is not included here because this procedure is covered at length in the carburetor general information section of the service manuals. However, the fast idle speed adjustment procedure applies only to these carburetors, so we'll review it here. Of course, Curb idle and basic timing adjustment should be correctly set before checking the fast idle speed adjustment. With the engine warmed up so the choke is open, remove the air cleaner. And cap the vacuum fittings for the hoses to the heated intake air control and the OSAC valve. Then with the engine running, Open the throttle slightly so you can position the fast idle speed adjusting screw on the second highest step of the fast idle cam. Check the tachometer indication and if necessary, adjust the speed to specifications. The dash pot on manual transmission models is also adjusted with the engine running. At curb idle speed and with the mixture properly set, position the throttle lever actuating tab so it contacts but does not depress the dash pot stem. Engine speed should be 2300 RPM. If adjustment is necessary, loosen the lock nut and screw the dash pot in or out. And retighten the lock nut. After the adjustment, recheck the speed indication. Incidentally, before we finish, let's take a brief look at the single Venturi Carter BBS carburetor used on light truck engines. This carburetor is essentially carried over from the previous model with only two important changes. A positive throttle return spring is added and the bowl vent valve has been eliminated. And that's our story on single Venturi carburetors for 1974. As usual, you'll find additional information in your reference books for this session. And be on the lookout for factors affecting fuel economy. That's the title of the next MTSC session headed your way.